Let's welcome in our first guest of the day, Alex Gasserud. He is a candidate for Congress. We've had this young man on the program a few different times since he launched his campaign. Alex, good morning to you. Thank you for being with us. Good morning, Rob. Great to be with you and the people of the Eastern Panhandle today. Where are you this morning as we speak? I am in my new home county, Wood County, in Parkersburg, West Virginia. Oh, when did you wow. move to Wood and why? Uh, yeah, so a career change uh, sent me to Wood County, and I moved into a new place here in Parkersburg, oh, about a month ago. Now, can an Elkins boy switch his allegiances to the Big Reds of Parkersburg? <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. That's not going to happen. I'm always going to be a Tiger through and through. Um, but, uh, hey, maybe my, my kids will uh, be, be on the Big Red. You never know, right? You never know. I don't know if you've ever been to Parkersburg High on game day, but that's like the whole community empties out in red to go to that football field. It is, uh, at least it used to be. I haven't been there for quite some time. But it is one of the great home game experiences in the state of West Virginia at the high school level. Yeah, Parkersburg has always had excellent uh, athletics, you know, football, basketball, baseball. They've always always been a great sports community. Uh, so excited to be in a great sports community here in Parkersburg for sure. South Park as well. South Park, Parkersburg South. Yeah, yeah. Parkersburg South. Yeah, and Williamstown. Well. They just won a state championship there. So I mean, all of Wood County, pretty mm-hmm. packed with sports. It's a very vibrant uh, sports area for sure. Alex, uh, your thoughts about the LG announcement coming to West Virginia that was made earlier this week? Yeah, that that sounds great. Um, you know, more jobs, obviously. So. You know, anytime West Virginians can can get more jobs or access to jobs here in in the Mountain State, it's always great. So glad to see that announcement. It sounds like they're high paying jobs. Sounds like we're going into the right sort of knowledge based avenue that we need to be going towards to bring West Virginia into the 21st century and and kind of get get the state into the knowledge based economy in a more uh, more dramatic, impactful way. Your thoughts on what states seem to have to do to attract businesses. In this particular case, it's, I think, a $54 million incentive package that the state will be forking over to uh, ensure LG's uh, move to West Virginia for some of their businesses. And this is not uncommon. If you don't do it, the surrounding state's going to get the business. But your thoughts on that, Alex? Yeah, definitely. Um, you You have to be competing against all the states today for these businesses and for these opportunities, these job opportunities. Uh, We need to be making sure that we are dedicating taxpayer dollars very carefully to attracting projects and jobs. Um, So the LG announcement, I think, is something that's a positive step in the right direction. I think there have been some other announcements that I disagree with, like Form Energy, for instance. Um, But we we just have to be mindful of these projects. Another thing I really want to see is these projects that have been announced materialize. I think that we have too many people right now in state politics and national politics that are a little too excited about all these announcements. Let's actually see these announcements materialize. The people working, West Virginians particularly, working in, for these companies and in these jobs and uh, producing and creating a living for their family that they can be proud of. So let's let a little bit of that materialize before we start taking victory laps around here. In regards to the Alex Gasserud for congressional seat uh, campaign, uh, obviously Riley Moore is the front runner in this and has a very healthy lead and share of the vote when you read the polls. Are you making any inroads towards getting uh, yourself more name recognition in this congressional district, Alex? Yes. Yeah, so we're, our signs are about to go up uh, here in the next week or two all across the major roadways of the district. So while West Virginians, men and women, wake up, get their families ready for school and go to work in all 27 counties, they will be seeing my signs when they get up in the morning and when they go home at night. Uh, so the name Gasserud is about to have uh, a, a big boost as far as my name identification is concerned, because people are going to be your, your average voter, not your political class, you know, um, person in, in West Virginia, uh, your average voter, your people that aren't paying attention to politics right now. Uh, they don't know what office Riley Moore even holds in the state. People like that are going to start paying attention to our campaign. And those are the people that are ultimately going to elect us uh, to, to the second congressional district here in 24. Bill. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Alex. I'm uh, glad to uh, welcome you back. Uh, we enjoy visiting Yeah, Bill. Great to talk to you. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, 
there's a has always been controversy which is the best way to get your name recognition out and you you've alluded that you're going to use a lot of signs uh what about the uh, the social media? What about radio, TV? Will you concentrate as much in these medias, or will you concentrate on the signs? Well, we haven't raised a lot of money, Bill. So our, our ability to run the campaign that we would want to run and the campaign we have to run are, are, are obviously two different campaigns. I mean, with my lack of name identification and, and previous public office track record, if I had the money that I would need to properly run a campaign, you would already start to see radio ads and television ads being introduced into most markets in the congressional district. You would have already signed, seen billboards up uh, throughout the major population centers of the district for the last six, seven months. Uh, you would be seeing a lot more direct mail pieces. You would see a more professionally robust run campaign if we had the money that we needed to to run it. And I'll tell you what, we'd be in a, a lot different position. Um, but we are going to run the best campaign that we can run with the limited resources we have. And a lot of that is going to be what we have been doing, which is uh, getting out, talking to people, talking to voters, going to different events. But the events are somewhat coming to an end here. We're going to be dealing straight with voters now. The average men and women that aren't paying too much attention to the social media posts uh, on Twitter, or Facebook, the, the political class, the people that aren't eating and breathing and sleeping politics on a daily and weekly basis, those are the people we're going to start reaching now. And and uh, obviously, we would like to reach them over the Internet. We'd like to reach them via radio. We'd like to reach them direct mail. Uh, but we're going to have to be a little bit more creative about how we reach them with the limited resources we have. Uh, fair enough. Uh, to, to answer a question that Rob asked earlier about LG, uh, your comment was always encouraging good-paying jobs to come to the state. Uh, but yet, you in the next breath, you mentioned Form Energy was one that you were not supportive of. Why were you against Form Energy? Because they, too, are paying good-paying jobs. Yeah, well, not as good as uh, the numbers were made to be there in the legislature. Uh, and, and I'm against Form Energy for a few reasons. The first is they are against the heritage resources of West Virginians. They're against the coal worker. They're against the natural gas exploration. They're against West Virginia energy. Uh, they are green energy plants. I don't like the people that are associated with this project whatsoever. Um, Bill Gates, uh, for instance, uh, is is – is somebody that I don't necessarily think the West Virginians need to give $300 million to. Uh, also, it sounds like the people in the legislature, after listening to Delegate Daniel Linville a few weeks ago, they, they really weren't sure what they were doing. You know, uh, If you did 10 minutes on, of research on Form Energy, you would have found out that even with the jobs that it creates in the northern panhandle, it's going against the West Virginians. It's going against our workers, it's going against our people because of what they believe in, which is kill the access to fossil fuels, kill our ability to uh, cheaply uh, bring energy to our state and allow our people to make money off the energy we bring. So they don't want that world. Uh, they want a green energy uh, world. And I don't think that it's the, it's the legislature's responsibility in this case to give them 300 million of, of West Virginia taxpayers when they're against what our state is for. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, the, uh, this this question has been uh, been quite controversial from day one. Uh, I think there'd be ample opportunity to go point counterpoint, but that's not the purpose of today's uh, discussion. So, thanks for your explanation. So. Yes, sir. Delegate Michael Heights. So, first of all, let me uh, say uh, kudos that for you you and your um, campaign recognizing that there's a huge difference between political junkies like ourselves and the average West Virginian out there. Um, you know, political junkies, we know everybody and, and who's running and what they stand for, um, but the average West Virginian doesn't. So it, a, a lot of campaigns don't recognize that and I, I think go in the wrong direction a lot of times. So kudos to you and your campaign for recognizing that. Um, Real quick, just on the form energy, you and I couldn't uh, uh, be further apart on that. As a legislator, I voted for it, and uh, I would I would vehemently uh, debate you on on all of the issues. But I'm not running against you. I'll leave that up to your opponent. Uh, so, uh, but having said that, I would like to know what some of those differences are. Um, 
for for the the listeners out there what are some of those differences between you and the front runner riley moore um that sets you apart and um would would make you the better choice for west virginians to vote for yeah sure a great question mike i appreciate that um yeah so what makes me different is i'm not from a political family so that's the first difference right off the bat my grandfather wasn't the governor of the state. My aunt's not a, a senator, and before that, a congresswoman. My, you know, cousin, he's, he's not running for governor. So I, I'm not from a political family dynasty. I've always had a calling to service since I was a child to, one, take a state that has always been in very, very rough shape and try to bring it into a much better light. And things are better in some ways now than they were when I was growing up as a kid uh, in the, you know, late 90s, 2000s. Uh, that's without a doubt. And, and some of that is the work that, that you all have done in the legislature. Some of that has been the, the party change and some organization. Uh, but one of the big differences between me and my, my opponent is that right there. I'm, I'm naturally inclined to do this. I was kind of born this way, if you will. He's somebody that it's being passed through the, you know, the, the family. So, so that's the first difference. I'm not, a, I'm not a political family dynasty person. The other thing is I haven't been tainted by any sort of service in Washington, D.C. You know, he worked for John Podesta and the Podesta Group, who ran uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, 2016 failed presidential campaign. He was also chief of staff to uh, Bill Clinton in the late 90s. So I don't have any sort of entanglements with Washington lobbyists. I didn't work at a lobbying firm. I didn't work for what I consider to be, you know, evil Democrats. Uh, so, so there's another big difference right off the bat. Uh, and, and I'm also a generational change. You know, I'm, I'm somebody that, you know, we, we need to get younger in West Virginia. We need to attract our youth. We need to be a state that people escape to, not escape from. And, and I don't believe the same political family are going to be able to accomplish that. Uh, they're not going to be able to bring that image to the state. Uh, so, so I think I've got a, you know, an ability, a natural ability uh, to execute the second congressional office for, for the constituents of West Virginia, bring generational change and, and increase the outcomes of, uh, of, of West Virginians. Generational change. Um, I would think Riley and you are, are pretty close in age together. He may be a little bit older, but when you say generational change, yeah, you're talking more about yeah. the family that, that, you know, that, that long-standing family um, is the change you're looking for? Say, say it again. I'm con- say it again. So I'm I, I see you and, and Riley as, as closer in age. He's still a young man as well. Both of you are young men um, compared to a lot of the people in politics right now. And in this room. And, and in this room, yes. Um, <laughs> and so I don't really see and, – and I see youth – Um, from both sides your campaign and his so when you talk about generational change are you are you talking again about the family it's time to change and not have this this the more um, name that's been in West Virginia for generations is that the change yeah I I mean for for me it's it's pretty simple we we have gone with the same people the same families um, for a long time now and and the reality is West Virginia has the lowest workforce participation rate in the nation. It leads the nation in drug overdose deaths per capita. It has the worst public health outcomes in the nation. Uh, It has a failed education system point blank. Uh, We have more people that are born and raised here. All the people that are born and raised here, a lot of them leave that uh, for higher paying jobs. So, so we, we lead the nation in, in, you know, in, in, in young people, you know, leaving the state. So, I don't believe that we're going to be able to change that with the same families and the same people. To, to, to me, it's, it's just the definition of insanity. We're continuing to elect the same people while West Virginia continues to decline. Okay. So that's, that's got to be for, first of mind for West Virginians. If you want to have a better life, if you want to make more money, if you want to raise your family, if you want to keep your grandkids here, if you want to have opportunities for your family, and for your kids, you're going to have to try to imagine voting for somebody that's last name doesn't start with an M, like Miller or Mooney or Moore or Morrissey or Manchin. You're going to have to get uh, more imaginative about what our future is going to be here. And, and our future is going to have to be different people. 
We can't continue with the people that are in Washington, D.C. now, people that are pushing 80, 90 years old. We can't continue with the same political families to run our state for the next 100 years. We need new people. And I'm, I'm that person. Alex, let me. Well, let Mike me sh- had a follow up first, Bill. Yeah, okay. yeah. Re- just real quick. A, a lot of the things that I, th- I think you're talking about, um, the change that you would like to see in West Virginia, seem to be, in my opinion, maybe changes that we be made at the state level in the legislature. So, what what are you looking to do as a congressman? What would you do in D.C. to make these changes because I, I, you know, the bringing or keeping the youth in West Virginia doesn't seem like something you would be doing in in Washington D.C. Sounds like more House of sure, Delegates, sure. yeah, yeah, House of yeah, Delegates type stuff. Definitely. Well, first of all, I'm, I'd be representing West Virginia, so I would be, you know, my service would would encompass the outcomes of the state. You know, I would be held directly accountable. And that's one of the problems. We don't hold our leaders right now accountable for what the outcomes are. They just keep coming back year after year, cycle after cycle, saying elect us. And, and, and we keep doing it. Uh, so one of the reasons I'm running for Congress is because I believe we're in the final hours of this republic. And if we don't get serious, rural, energetic leadership in Washington, D.C., that is much younger than what the, what the, what the average age of these people are, then, then we're, we're not going to have a, a country left. So that's why I'm running for Congress. I'm running for Congress to go fight the radical left, I'm running for Congress to secure the border. I'm running for Congress to not allow the United States of America to be pushed around on the international stage by China or Russia or Ukraine or anyone else out there. So, so I'm running for Congress to, to, to save the country right now. That's the reason I'm doing this. Is this a perfect time situation for me? Absolutely not. But I'm doing it because I know that if we don't get – Serious, competent leadership, people that have a natural ability and an idea of what needs to be done to get the country back on track, we're done. Good, Bill. $33 plus trillion, dollars, we're not going to be able to afford to pay the, the interest on the debt. We have a border that's wide open. We have a world that is less safe. We have a, a country that it's harder to make a living in, harder to raise a family in, harder to bring security and stability to the home. It's, it's, that has to change. We have education systems failing. We have people that think there, there is no difference between men and women. We have some real, real fallacies out there that are being propagated as truth. And if you want to end, you want to keep transgenderism at the fringe and not normalize it, you've got to send somebody like me to Washington, D.C. Raleigh Moore's not going to do it. Excuse me, you want Alex. To the border, you're going to have to send me. Excuse me. One of our uh, commenters on the chat room said that you do not believe that women should serve in Congress. I had not heard that before. Would you address that point? The women that we have in Congress right now should not be there. Shelley Moore Capito and Carol Miller need replaced. That should be top of the mind of the conservative movement in West Virginia. But would you extend that to that, all to women? Say that to, to, women absolutely should be in Congress. Women are in Congress. They serve in Congress. We need young, energetic women to, to serve in Congress in West Virginia, if the truth be known. We need, we need a new generation of leader. We need people that are conservative, and we need people that aren't the same names. So I welcome any woman, any any woman to run for Congress in West Virginia or anywhere else in the country. We have about three and a half minutes left here. Bill, did you have another no, question? No, that or was my I'll take I'll, I'll, he, I think he addressed it. You, so you're you're you do not have a problem with women serving in Congress. You just have a problem with the women that are currently serving in Congress. Is that correct? Hey, hey Bill, last last time I checked, I was born in 1992. So I, I definitely don't harbor any sort of uh, belief that, that women shouldn't be in politics or women shouldn't be in elected public office or in positions of power. Uh, I will tell you the United States of America isn't ready for Nikki Haley to be president, uh, and, and, that, and that's not being sexist. That's just being truthful. Because okay. she's too old? No, because she's, she, she's inexperienced, in my opinion. She's, she, she's not the sort of person we're going to need to, to run the country. But you know, it's, Because it's, I say that doesn't, make, doesn't, doesn't mean because I have something against women. It's because I don't think the world would respect us with Nikki Haley as a president. We need, we need Donald Trump. Well, yeah, so, but you you made the point a second ago that uh, uh, that uh, you need leadership, you need experience. Then you said earlier you do not you need to get a generational change. You need to get older, I mean, younger people in. The, in most of the younger yeah, folks yeah. do not have the experience that you you you're advocating. Right, right. Okay, and that's okay because yeah. the people that have the experience have run the country into the ground. 
The so people you, that are 80, 90 years old that have been in Washington, D.C. for decades, the people that have stayed in Washington, D.C. and have clung on to power, the people that serve the lobbyists and the corporate class, those people have to go. All right, Alex, i got and, a couple and, of minutes and, left and here. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take hey. some some inexperienced young people to get the country back on track. A congressman is going to have to deal with several very delicate international issues right now. Does Congressman Gasserud vote to fund Ukraine or not? No, we have to stop uh, mortgaging our children's future on the war in Ukraine. I don't believe Russia will be able to occupy Ukraine long term. I don't believe in the conventional foreign policy in Washington, D.C. that thinks that somehow Ukraine falling is going to end Western values and Western civilization and democracy will crumble uh, for our allies in, in the United States. I just don't believe in that. Does, does Congressman Gasserud fund Israel right now? Yes, we absolutely stand. We, we already send lots of money to Israel for, for, for military purposes. No American boots on the ground. Uh, I believe that no ceasefire should take place. The Israelis have to go in immediately and displace the Palestinians. Those that want to assimilate can assimilate into the Israeli state. Those that don't want to find somewhere else to migrate to. There is no such thing as a state solution in the current, in the current affairs. And the reason that is, there's, there's no possibility for a two-state solution, is because the Palestinians have allowed a terror organization, a terrorist to get Hamas to run their society. When you allow a terrorist to get to, to run your society, you should be displaced, and the Palestinian state will have to be displaced by the Israelis, or there'll be no peace. Mike Hike. Alex, I would I would love to see a debate between you and Riley. Are there any schedule? Do you anticipate that happening sometime soon? Mike, I, I was thinking the same thing this past week. I would love to see a debate. I'd love to see a debate with all the candidates. If it's just me and Riley, that'd be great, too, excluding the other two. I've got no problem with that. I'm ready to debate Riley Moore. Joe Early or Nate Kane anywhere, anytime, on any stage, any rules whatsoever. Uh, you know, no holds bar. I, I, I'm ready. I'm ready for that. I think we need to do that ASAP. I'd do this. I would do a debate on any program, any venue, any time. And I would. You know, I, I always watch the congressional debates on C-SPAN every cycle. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, we're going to have uh, an actual official format uh, and, and have a formal debate. Uh, for the second congressional district, because I think it is important for us to go on the records and to show our abilities against each other. You know, uh, I want to I want to hear these candidates defend themselves on these issues and be able to be able to be able to say why they you know why they should serve Congress, serve in Congress. And uh, Alex, how do people find out more about your campaign for Congress? Yeah, you can always follow me on uh, gasserud 4 wvcom You can also follow me on Facebook. I'm on Twitter some as well. Uh, so you know, definitely follow us uh, on there, and uh, you'll be you'll be seeing more more of us. You know, with the limited resources we have, we're still going to run a pretty good campaign here all the way to the end. We'll be filing soon, so anybody that, that didn't think I was for real with getting on the ballot or any of this, we'll be filed here soon, and we'll have an announcement uh, when that takes place here in another week or so. All right, Alex, I can't guarantee you'll be on the program again because of your anti M bias. This is Rob Mario and my producers, Colin McLaughlin. <laughs> So you didn't make any points there at all. Oh, I miss you guys. The hey, letter Mike, good M down there in your session as well. The hey, letter you, Alex. M has as equal rights as the other twenty-five letters in the alphabet, and I hope you come around to that realization. We will not tolerate anti-M bias in any manner on this program. Yes, sir. I'm sorry about that. I bid you a good day, sir. Yes, you have a great day. Thank you, Alex. <clears throat> there are certain things I won't tolerate on this program.